Today, I'm gonna drink some tea and talk about boys. This is a world. This is a world. This is a world. So, hey y'all, today I'm having a little green tea. It's this, I believe it's, yeah, it's Legends of China green tea. This is just some like, I think I got it in, I think I actually got it in Chinatown, but it's like some basic stuff. So I'm sitting here. I was going to have this, um, I was going to have this and I may have this at some other time. It's this Mandela Masala and it looked really great, but I didn't want to go through all that today. So maybe the next time I have tea with y'all, I'm going to have that. The reason I'm having tea with y'all is obviously I'm still doing this cleanse, whatever. Let's not get into a big thing about the cleanse. Okay. Today. All right. We're going to talk about Today we're talking about boys, so, um, but I'm drinking tea, obviously, because I'm doing the cleanse, and so I can't do like a whole mukbang with y'all. I'd be like just drinking out of a jug, so I thought tea would be a nice little soothing, healing, peaceful way to have a conversation with y'all and, you know, feel some love and get all warm and, you know, you know, we're going to do it like that, so... And it's got some lemon. It's got some lemon floating in there. And I always leave my tea bag in my tea too long when I'm having green tea. So I did myself a favor and I am. Um, I got this little, I got this little coaster. Isn't that cute? It's Toulouse Lautrec. It's itself. It's like a little Toulouse Lautrec. So we're having tea with Toulouse today. So yeah, and we're gonna talk about boys. So what do I mean by talk about boys? So yesterday I made that brief little, you know, whack little video saying that I basically wasn't making a video yesterday because I wanted to dig in a little bit and talk to you guys about what's going on on my channel, especially demographically, because my channel has pretty consistently been predominantly women and predominantly, I would say 40% of my viewers are between 25 and 34, or at least they're being identified by, uh, you know, YouTube. Analyt analytics as being between the ages of 25 and 34 and you know a good 70 percent of that segment are women and that's just been my channel I've been you know that's who I that's who I've understood myself to be having the conversation predominantly with and that's obviously you know we don't know what that really means because YouTube, unfortunately, does not have a box for non-binary. So, you know, we also have to keep, take that into consideration. But that said, uh, most of the people are being identified as from, as from YouTube, by YouTube, as women between the ages of 25 and 35, which is cool. That's cool. You know, I can, I can vibe with that. And, um, you know, that also, you know, means that there are a significant portion of the audience that have been men, but the majority have been women. Now, what does that matter? It doesn't matter at all. Cause I'm just, like I said yesterday, I'm just doing me. And those of you who appreciate that, I really, I, you know, the people who are drawn to the channel are the people who are drawn to the channel. I love you. It doesn't matter to me how you identify. It doesn't matter to me if you consider yourself someone on the left or someone on the right. It doesn't matter how you identify in terms of your gender. It doesn't matter to me your age. I don't care if you're six or 106, you know, you're a human being, you're an, a, a sentient being who has chosen to sit down and listen to me talk. So I'm really, really glad that you're here. But we are going to look at uh, the demographics of the channel and how they've changed over the last month, specifically after posting a video about vegan gains and vegan gains responding to that video in the way that he did. And I suspect a number of people who are supporters of vegan gains have come over to the channel to address the issue. And so that's what happened. And so um, just to give you a sense of what I'm talking about. So just last month, uh, we, I had, um, 0.3% of the viewers, by the way, were ages 13 to 17. So it's a very, very small segment of people who are under 18 who have been 
watching the channel and of that 0.3%, 88% of them were, are, you know, people who are being identified by YouTube as female and 12% of them are people who are being identified by YouTube as male. Uh, in terms of the 18 to 24 year olds, that's 25% of the audience. So about a quarter of you, one in, one in four of you is 18 to 25. And of that segment, 21% are females and 29% are males. And so there's a little bit more of a balance, but still overwhelmingly the majority of that segment are people who are being identified as female. Again, YouTube doesn't give a box for non-binary. So, you know, we don't really know what that means. And then in terms of the group that is 25 to 34%, um, that's being identified by YouTube as being 39%. I said 40% before, but 39%. And of that group, 77% are being identified by YouTube as female and 23% being identified by YouTube as male. So that was just a month ago. That was March. And so, you know, YouTube shows the last 28 days, and obviously it is for those of you who don't know that it's April 28th, at least here in the continental U.S., it is United States of America, it is April 28th, 2017. And so now those numbers have shifted. So again, uh, last last month in March, it was that 0.3% of the viewers were 13 to 17. Now, this month, that number is represented by 0.9%. So it was 0.5%, but remember last month, it was 88% identified as female and 12% identified as male. Well, this month, it's 20% represented by female. And now 80% of the viewers on this channel who are 13 to 17 are men. That's a huge shift. And now um, I don't know if significantly the number, I believe the number has changed in terms of the, uh, uh, I don't know if significantly, again, again, I don't know if significantly the number of males on the channel between 18 to 25 has changed and I didn't capture that number for this talk. But last month, again, it was uh, people being identified as female, 71% to males, 29%. This month, it's 53% now represented uh, as female and 47%. So it's almost 50-50. So um, it's almost a 25% increase in the number of men between 18 and 25. And then again, another huge leap uh, from for the group of 25 to 34 year olds last month it was 77 percent um, female and 23 percent identified as male and this month it's 57 percent female and 43 percent male that's a 20 percent jump in men uh, ages 25 to 34 and I'm sure that there were changes in other age groups as well but those represent by far the majority of the group and again I was capturing that 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 age group of 13 to 17 because that was the largest leap in terms of a shift between the identifying as female identifying as male demographic that is huge. And so there's a part of me that thinks, wow, this is really, you know, it's whatever it is, right? And, um, and for me, that's, that can, you know, it doesn't matter, again, it doesn't matter what the gender of people, but it's definitely, there's a significant portion of, uh, of viewers who, you know, have not been, ex had not been exposed to the channel who now have been exposed to the channel. And I'm going to say yes, because of vegan gains. And so I can express some gratitude towards that. Not all of them are necessarily people who are hostile. I'm going to say a large portion of that segment of the population, clearly a lot of the new, uh, because the, the, amount of view time per video has gone way down, especially in the video 
about vegan gains initially. So there were a lot of people who came to the channel, made a comment and didn't even watch the video. It didn't watch the video at all, which to me, um, kind of undercuts this idea that people on the left, especially people who have been, you know, are being labeled social justice warriors, as I've been labeled a social, social justice warrior, are in an echo chamber. Um, you know, I clearly went to Vegan Gaines' channel, watched several of his videos, was able, able to make an assessment and to create a video that talked about what I thought was happening in terms of the direction of his channel. So, you know, I don't know if you, is that being in an echo chamber? And then yet people from Vegan Gaines' channel came here, came to my channel and I just spilled hot tea all over myself. I'm gonna drink some tea, y'all. Mm. So people from Vegan Gaines' channel came here and didn't watch the video. But, you know, the accusation is that I'm the person who's in the echo chamber. So I do want people who are coming to the channel, if you disagree with me, if you're someone who's anti-SJW, if you think of me as an SJW, I urge you to watch some of my videos because what you're saying about me isn't true. I don't mind you criticizing me. In fact, criticize me because criticizing me makes me have to think about the things that I'm saying and the things that I'm doing. But when you come to the channel and you call me a cuck, for example, which is a cuckold, right? Which is usually something that is said about um, males when their wives have cheated on them. First of all, I'm gay. I'm, you know what I mean? I have a husband and, you know, yeah. And the nature of our particular relationship, I don't want to go into the details, but you know, maybe I'm in an open relationship and maybe there's not really such a thing as cuckolding in our relationship, but you know, not that that's the case, but it could go that way. Right. So it really just shows a lack of maturity and a lack of a sense of what the reality of a relationship is. So again, it doesn't, you know, it's, it's okay. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. And you know, if you, if the best you can say about me is that I'm an SJW, that's whatever. It's sure. Sure. I'll be that. And if you want to see me as, you know, Voldemort from, you know, and, and you want to see vegan gains as Harry Potter, that's fine too. I'm an actor. I love playing roles, especially if the role requires me to have magical powers. But anyway, so I'm going to keep going with that. Um, and, you know, so there was some question about like, what is motivating these young people, um, especially to speak with language that is so fraught with violence. So a lot of the comments that actually made it up onto the page in the comment section to be publicly viewed were uh, about, you know, they were descriptions of rape. They were descriptions of rape. And I found that fairly disturbing. First of all, that people were imagining vegan gains, like the, the, they equate vegan gains making a video about me to him, you know, anally penetrating me against my will in a violent way and in a, in a violent way against my will, I suppose would be violent anyway, but you know, that's what you're saying. You're describing vegan gains taking his penis and somehow tying me down or holding me down and forcibly penetrating me in the anus. And that's somehow an idea of a victory that is seen as victorious. So I think we should, I think we should think about that. And I think we might want to question what that's about, right? And then there are the comments that didn't make it to the page. And there are quite a few of them. And most of them are describing me as either a nigger or a faggot or both. <laughs> and this to me is, is, it's ironic, right? Because vegan gains victory coming in the form of him anally raping me, not that it would make him necessarily homosexual and not that a homosexual is a faggot, but 
I'm, my sense is that when you're saying faggot, you're talking about someone who's gay. And I think it's direct and meant to be derogatory against a homosexual. But what you're describing is an act that is, you know, an, a sexual act between men. It's an act of violence that is played out <laughs> as a sexual act between men. So, but, you know, I'm being called a faggot, but that's okay. But for vegan gains to engage in that be behavior seems to be admirable to a certain segment of the population. Um, and again, this isn't about vegan gains. This is talking about the mentality of the boys who've come to the channel and are expressing themselves in a very particular way. Um, and then the other is, you know, to call me a nigger and I'm sorry, but y'all vegan gains is at least half black. And, you know, I don't know that it works that way. I don't know that it's half and half. I don't know how many of the genes from one or the other can be counted as the genes from whatever, right? And looking at the whole thing, right, we know that the race whole thing is a construct anyway, right? And that there's no one who's white or black. We're all human beings. And there is this designation, this racial designation that was completely invented in 1681 to, you know, go along with, to coincide with miscegenation laws, right? But that's beside the point. So learn your history there. But, you know, this group of people seems to be blind to the fact that the person that they're defending, they're in many ways demeaning and undermining as much as they are thinking or claiming or trying to demean and undermine me. And none of it's really working because, you know, most of you are, you know, 13 to 17 year olds who haven't even finished, you know, your brains are still developing. So I can forgive the fact that you're not connecting all of these dots and understanding how your behavior is not, that there are a lot of, um, there are a lot of inconsistencies, to say the least. There are a lot of inconsistencies. So that said, um, you know, in wondering about all of this, Jesse Fruworth, who is a regular viewer who I love, who leaves a great comments, and there are a lot of you that do that, but Jesse uh, suggested that I look at a video that was made by Sean of Sean and Jen. And I'll include a link to this in the description box, but the video is called The Fate of the Frogman and Sean does a great job of, he presents a pretty keen analysis of, you know, these young viewers um, and handles the topic with the sensitivity that you would expect when you're talking about basically children. And, but it really does look at the reality that we're looking at young people who, for the most part, grew up understanding their idea of politics is, you know, the, the, you know, the president of the United States was and has only been Barack Obama. There are people who were 10 years old when Barack Obama, who was well, seven years old when Barack Obama, um, yeah, 10 years old or, you know, nine, nine years old when Barack Obama was elected as president, depending on, you know, in this age group or younger or younger. So they only know Barack Obama as president, the 13 year olds. They were five when Barack Obama was elected. They only know of a Democratic president, and they only know of Barack Obama as that president, right? George Bush and what came behind in their minds is probably ancient history. It's like me thinking about like, you know, film noir and 40s movies, right? Those black and white films may as, may as well have been made, you know, in ancient Greece, as far as I was concerned. But Sean does a really great job of breaking down the thought process. And he, you know, he claims that he himself was you know, one of these, you know, thinkers, right? Someone who really thought of the world in that way. And so I really appreciate the, I really appreciate Sean's video and hope that you'll go and you'll take a look at that. So, yes. And then I haven't really talked about, you know, there's the death threats as well, which I don't take seriously necessarily, you know. I don't like it. It doesn't make me comfortable, but um, 
I imagine again that this is coming from the minds, very under, underdeveloped minds, right? This is coming from the minds of 13 to 17 year, year olds who have to be a gr great portion of the folks who've been watching, watching the channel. You know, if I'm getting, you know, 10 to 20,000 views a month, you know, we're talking about uh, 5,000 of those views perhaps coming from, from people from Vegan gains this channel, so a great deal of them probably are these, you know, very engaged, uh, enthusiastic supporters of vegan gains. So the idea that these death threats are seen as acceptable by this group who have criticized groups like Black Lives Matter have criticized Muslims for believing in Sharia law, yet embrace this quite draconian imagination of what it means to engage in debate, like to engage in debate is violence. Uh, uh, these expressions of violence are, you know, glorified. And so I don't necessarily see where connections are being made between the realities of the world and their beliefs. And again, I shouldn't even talk about them as beliefs because I don't know. This could just be things that people are saying, right? This could be meaningless. This could be, you know, just trolling as they say. But I don't imagine that everyone who's come and made a comment like that has been simply trolling. I, I have to imagine that some of the people who are, who are talking about the world in the way that they're talking about it really believe it. And so... You know, this idea of, you know, who's in touch with reality, who's not in touch with reality. Uh, I talked about the Noam Chomsky interview, and Noam Chomsky describes Republican as the most dangerous organization on the planet right now. And looking at the actions of that organization, you know, it's the Republican Party, but he is loath to call them even a party. He calls them, you know, a violent organization. If you look at what they are doing right now, dropping the mother of all bombs in, I believe it was Afghanistan, this bombing of the air base in Syria, this political, this um, military maneuvers in North Korea, all of these things that are bringing us closer and closer to global destruction. And yet, Thinking that it is appropriate to, to simply criticize a group like Black Lives Matter, to think of SJWs as the cancer of the world, to fear desperately Muslims and the effect of the spread of Muslim beliefs or Islamic faith around the world, knowing that there's this this, you know, this person who can push a button and destroy the planet and seems to be moving us in that direction. It's a little like sitting in a room full of serial killers and talking about the risks of West Nile virus from mosquitoes. Now, really, it's that out of balance. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't be concerned with terrorism. But that's not the major concern right now, everyone. That is not the major concern. That is not the major concern. We should be questioning the, you know, unchecked powers of the state. And as confused as Black Lives Matter may be by focusing on, say, the issues that are being experienced by African Americans or black people around the globe, at least they're directing their concerns towards the state. They're directing their concerns towards state violence. And so why criticize Black Lives Matter 
for directing their concerns towards state violence, regardless of how confused they might be. What we might say is, yes, Black Lives Matter, state violence does exist, but it exists here and here and here. But what we're getting is not state violence exists here and here and here. What we're getting is no, everyone is equal. Everyone has rights. There's no racism. And that is just ridiculous to me. So, I don't know. So addressing state violence, waking up to reality, really getting out of these echo chambers where we're spending so much time focused on creating these, you know, the, focusing on these imaginary demons like SJWs and worrying about feminists, really? Are feminists the greatest danger society has to face? face right now? No. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send you all, um, we're going to leave this today, and I want to send you all to peoplesclimate.org, which I think the last time I talked about it, I was saying that uh, there were marches happening all over the world, and I imagine there are marches in solidarity that are going to be happening in countries everywhere. And please let me know if you're in a country other than the United States of America, and there is a climate march uh, in your area. Uh, tomorrow, and that's going to be uh, uh, Saturday the 29th. It's the 28th, yes, so tomorrow, Saturday the 29th of April 2017. And uh, for those of you who are in the United States, there are going to be marches all over the country. Not, not every major city has one, but certainly there are marches up and down the east and west coast. There are several in Texas, there are several in the Midwest, so I am certain that if you if you, um, you know, have some resources and you have the time, you can get yourself to a march. And if not, you can either, you know, kind of watch along. Amy Goodman is going to be broadcasting live, I believe, from the People's Climate March all day tomorrow. So you can check that out on Democracy Now! Um, and then otherwise, yeah, just find a way to get involved and get focused on what really matters. And, you know, if you want to just stay on the channel, stay on the channel, but, you know, do try to get engaged in the conversation and not just hurl, you know, racial slurs and, you know, you know, other kinds of slurs, you know? So, so yeah, I think that's all I have to say. This tea is really delicious. I'm going to keep on drinking this, and I hope you all have an amazing day. Otherwise, that is it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Ooh. Nice. <laughs> love yourself. Peace. And I love myself. The world is a ghetto.